Hello, this is Jeff Rudd here from United People. The following is a recording of an article put out by United People on the 19th of April 2020, entitled The Week from Hell for Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. It begins. The last seven days started like the week before. News for are being shared out that the number of infections in Ireland increasing and the sad passing of more people. Each death heartbreaking to families of the lost. United People extends its deepest sympathy to all families. Social media started to show signs that it too was feeling the effect of more people staying at home and possibly censorship or removal of items kicking in. We had the news, no surprise that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael were once again desperately switching back and forth between other small parties. Desperate to suck in other bunches of people to cover their own backside in the doll, while the central bank came out to state, plain obvious, that not all jobs would return. News emerged that Mary Lou Macdonald was to return to the doll after corona isolation, non-virus illness and then lung issues from catching the virus after that a good measure. Concerns continue to be expressed over some time because of a near police state. Some evidence emerged that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael were still rejecting Sinn Féin but still willing to steal their ideas while the Irish Times, usually a Fianna Gael backing newspaper, also came out and stated this also. For them to state it too was staggering in itself and says loads. The Wake of Ireland found that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil were to share equal cabinet seats even though they came second and third in the general election regarding the number of public votes, while they both deliberately blanked the first place winner. Then we discovered that democracy and free speech was further cracked down on within the Fianna Fáil party as they group kicked out anyone of their own but daring to say anything different which might also conflict with the words of their party boss. Fianna Fáil core members expressed their dismay when being suddenly ousted and ostracised too, like their party was also doing to Sinn Féin for some time. Shannon Watch reported that 130 USA military bases were corona infected, while their troops continues to flow into Ireland. It should be noted that all the previous were just emerging or noted to be continuing on the 12th prior to this report going on the United People website. And it was true one day alone. The following comes from the week when this report was put out originally. Monday. The next day was no better. Various newspapers stated Leo Vradka's own statement telling us that we the awake of Ireland already know, Ireland was still facing its darkest days. Little did we know then, it would be also later in this very week. The Phoenix magazine reported on the unfair bias of the 350 payment, exposing much about that which Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael were not telling the public when they appeared on our e cameras. The same day, the same publication exposed a possible party forge to continue on in Labour as the newly elected leader might wish to see off his own internal foes. For the news emerged that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil had now flipped back again to the Social Democrats in government formation and desperation. Their attempts so far to induce the Greens and Labour Party back into their dull cabal having failed. While massive criticism of dull elected excluding Sinn Féin, continued for taking massive €8,000 pay rise when they progressed corona plans that put people further out of work. It emerged that in New Zealand, their politicians were at least doing the decent thing and all taking a substantial pay drop. While Irish elected, excluding Sinn Féin, remained also very quiet about their pay bump upwards. It was obvious that the public was and still is generally not meant to know about all this, or he was and still is too silent on the matter. The criticism of Cheltenham going ahead and so many attending it, 18,000, continued but what was yet to emerge later in the week that would further damn Fine Gael and all those to have allowed it to continue. 
The media reported that restrictions were likely to continue until there is a vaccine that Fine Gael can then later demand everyone get, and if they don't, they might find themselves ostracised, notice a trend here, and told they cannot avail of border services. Unconstitutional or discrimination to come? Question mark. We will be seeing this later on in the future, possibly. Meanwhile, news emerged that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael were to officially meet to sign off on their 22-page government formation document. Certain media outlets made a big PR song and dance about this, until the document was actually handed out and read by others. More on that to come. The same day, Ireland people were to find out that many people were also given the wrong test results by the state. Not the first time this has happened under a government by the same parties in power or backing them. That government formation document that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil hoped to sway others to their favour, people and parties began to read it. The criticism of it began immediately and would continue all week. Not just what was in it, no. What was also massively missing from it, while it appeared also to be more vagueness and easy get out escape sections for a future Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil government that didn't want to be caught standing by previous words said on paper. That was the end of Monday. Tuesday, United People raised the subject of the all right factor connected to the coronavirus, the first party to do so. This all right was for many weeks since the start of February, something the Fine Gael government had also remained very quiet on, subject avoided. But daring to ask us questions, United People, a all registered official political party, came under attack online for daring to speak out about politics, something they are existing for. The journal.ie ran a poll about would a government of Fianna Fáil Fine Gael be public supported? The result at the end was a resounding no over 62% plus. Other media outlets didn't like that answer, so no more was said about that poll. United People tried to explain why Fianna Fáil Fine Gael might continue to refuse a national emergency and unity government, while they did double standard call for unity in the face of a virus, while they still ostracised Sinn Féin and yes, even their own internal party members. Separately from all that, Mary Lou made a personal statement regarding her health. Wednesday. TDs already gaining a massive wage and additional kept quiet wage bump, incredibly then demanded that they get an additional allowance for working from home, besides also the travel allowance, which they didn't want to see taken away from them. Something others workers across the country couldn't claim. A shocking exposure emerged that day showing how the Irish government risked the lives of people in nursing homes and then lost that risk. RTE News, of course, said nothing about this report. Rumours started to emerge that the number of infected and the number of tests done might be way off from what was actually being quoted to media on a daily basis. Media reported that if Varadka was trying to claim to power after coming in third, he had to dump some of his party mates from positions. It was bad enough he had to do it, but to have it publicised was bad PR for Leo. Leo only likes to make regular good PR for the masses. On the same day, the health chief was forced to admit they didn't know the real corona death toll. United People produced an exposing report regarding past austerity measures, what are now deemed wrong, and more on future state antics to come. News emerged that Wednesday that the Fianna Fáil Fine Gael deal was done, and on the same day, video was dug up of Michael Martin previously stating outside the doll that Fianna Fáil would not be going into a future government of Fine Gael because it was all about public trust and Fianna Fáil being seen to keep their word. Big oops. The Irish Times came out and also stated that Fianna Fáil Fine Gael were using Sinn Féin policies despite the latter still being excluded by the former. End of Wednesday. Thursday. Things decidedly went from bad to worse for Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. Fianna Fáil being its continuing backer. More solid details emerged about how the pair of them made a complete hash of home care matters. Not before time, more journalists started to finally ask the questions they should have been asking a long time previous. 
national and local media began to wake up and started to more mistrust the Fine Gael daily proceeded. PR efforts. Journalists went on a questioning offensive. Fine Gael decided to play duck and cover. Journalist Jean Kerrigan spoke very well. Elected in opposition had been saying for some time. The low quality of the now recognised Fine Gael Fianna Fáil farcical formation for government document. The criticism of it not only continued, but others also pointed out that it had taken two parties from the second week of February to present date to produce so little in detail beyond the filler that it was. Other elected were seen and heard to agree on social media platforms and through non RTE media that actually voiced government criticism more so than RTE likes to do. Extra.ie and media others confirmed the long future restrictions to continue. The Irish Independent even came out and admitted the Fianna Fáil Fine Gael promises don't add up. For the Independent newspaper to state this alone when they are daily normally found to be a backbone of Fine Gael support still remains a staggering de- development in itself. At 4.30 approximately in the Dáil it was finally admitted that the corona oil rate factor for which Fine Gael was exposed as keeping quiet on and which United People had previously called for to be stated on record was revealed between 1.00 and 0.70. That was the end of Thursday. Friday, the news came out that Ireland had hit its worst day for deaths from Corona. More details emerged about the home care mistakes the government made and how too late they acted in stepping in. Due to this lateness and also previously criticising those that tried to warn them, it was opinionated by many in Ireland that Fine Gael had actually caused the loss of more lives than that was necessary to be lost due to the coronavirus. Leo Varadka admitted that when people look back in history it might be discovered that a number of mistakes have been made. Then he quickly dropped the subject before moving on to something else. TD's travel expenses were again exposed and called by others to be cut as they were still able to be claimed by TD's staying at home. News started to emerge about the importation of large numbers of people across Ireland's borders in order to pick strawberries. The company involved said they were essential workers. Others asked when was strawberries themselves considered essential, while many other businesses in Ireland were closed down and not allowed to operate. There was perceived unfairness besides the company floating around health regulations and restrictions imposed on the rest of Ireland people and small SMEs. National and local media all expressed their anger at the double standards permitted by Fine Gael, who themselves were all over the place in trying to cope, PR-wise. Backing the company earlier in the day, then seeing how the media and public felt, they changed their PR tune later in the same day to agree with the public. Airport video exposed mass numbers arriving in Ireland, all bunched together, no social distancing. For the criticism of the Fianna Fáil Fine Gael government framework document continued, as was called an insult to those who wanted change. Media and opposition TDs began to more seriously question what was behind closed door deals, which had been done again with Dennis O'Brien and others for the usage of their privately owned hospitals. Demands were made by others for Fine Gael to tell the full truth. The Irish Times came out and stated, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil's reckless manifesto offers a recipe for disaster. RTE, of course, said nothing once more. The Irish Examiner had an expose care of nurses telling of reported more accurate underground matters. The numbers are being fudged, says nurse who brands testing. Again, RTE news reporters and O'Brien Media said nothing. Another deafening silence. For the evidence of EU airports being flooded with no social distancing measures emerged, while it also became known that even more people were continuing to be imported into Ireland like the day before for picking strawberries. Despite what Fine Gael had said the previous evening, even the night before, after flip-flopping. The Irish Times ran an expose article entitled Nurses account for nearly 1 in 10 coronavirus cases, new data shows. 
as called for government incompetence over PPP, understaffing and under-resourced hospitals continue to struggle. RTE News said nothing about the shocking report, but their man George Lee did come out and make a terrible statement about bodies dropping like flies in care homes. This was thought to upset or possibly cause further distress to families of those in care homes. More Fianna Fáil rank cracks in the party were exposed by Aon Grieve as he came out and dismissed the Fianna Fáil Fianna Gael coalition plan as a wish list with no costings. He expressed further worries for rural people on the already much ridiculed document. Sinn Féin housing spokesman Yon O'Brien pointed out that both parties promised document stated items before. After earlier similar words, little or nothing came to fruition in many areas then. Dr Tony Houlihan says the chartering of flights to bring workers into the country is not consistent with the public health advice. When asked about the Keelings Ryanair controversy, it was the first public insight about how health officials' suggestions and Fine Gael owned antics were in possible conflict. Given the amount of Fine Gael cock cock ups continuing, but alleged buried by RTE to its viewers, Michael Clifford of the Examiner came out and called for what United People had been seeking since the party's creation more elected accountability. An article called The Caretaker Cabinet Must Be Accountable was printed in the Examiner. End of Friday. The same Examiner newspaper revealed what ought in other media didn't or refused to that the state was giving no funds to support the air ambulance service. Previously, also news and report buried by Fine Gael and the Kenny had cut funds to similar services and it was said to have possibly contributed to the loss of a later rescue crew which had to be called in because another underfunded service was not available due to previous and the instigated emergency service cuts. This whole matter is also not RTE or Dennis O'Brien Media outlet reported, but the Phoenix magazine has gone into it extensively. Facts, names, details, the whole lot. A front page media report, health staff pay a terrible price in race to stop virus, emerged exposing much including one third of the Republic infected was nurses. This adds to a shocking figure that 63% of all Republic infected tested could be found in care homes alone. It further emerged yesterday that the HSE memo referred to those infected as being said to be the dirtiest, making out possibly that even if they were, that there was a correlation between ability to catch the infection and being the dirtiest. Finnegale and others have avoided addressing this additional matter substantially or at all. With their now regular on-camera appearances, RTE have equally played down the matter. No surprise from them at this stage. Fianna Fáil leader Michael Martin is reported trying to stop Fianna Fáil members getting an ability to vote by post regarding the acceptance or rejection of the proposed coalition document being passed around. He would prefer to see who is likely voting what way and possible then try apply pressure to them directly or through his party whip so that they all then fall in line with his dictates. Question mark. There is a current real unease within core Fianna Fáil that the marriage of them to Fianna Gael is opening the door to further future election disasters. Disasters of all disasters for Fianna Gael, further details have emerged surrounding the Cheltenham Racing fiasco, the one when Fine Gael and Mr Harris saw no issue. They also indicating there would be no travel restrictions, no health checks, nor any advice given regards 14-day quarantine to any of the 18,000 plus returning from a prior known infected zone. This being the very same racing zone that has doubled the now infected in comparison to other surrounding zones who didn't run race competitions at the same time. This report too has been RTE media non-reported, like many other things that elected are also not publicising. This in turn leads to a very obvious statement in question. People all around the world and yes in Ireland on a regular basis have been fired from jobs and roles for saying the wrong thing, upsetting someone, tweeting something wrong, Facebook being daft, not acting where they should have and loads of other apparent good reasons. Many people have been fired from their jobs because of their actions or inactions 
have led to the death of many or one. So the question is, what does it take in Ireland to have an elected person or party removed from office if they not only have made a regular hash of things, but also have caused one family alone to lose a single loved one? Never mind, sadly, possibly others from additional families also. This is a genuine question. Moving into Saturday night, Coming closer to the end of a disastrous week, it had also been exposed at the Fine Gael appointment of Ernst & Young, the worldwide business that looks after corporations as a primary concern, have been brought in to oversee the lifting of corona restrictions placed on people for some explicable reason. Brought in despite having no medical qualifications, and who are the same business crew that came up with the Apple tax dodging racket that has cost Irish state people 14 plus billion euro, and now more as Fine Gael borne through public money in legal costs to fight against the state having the money and trying to give it back to Apple. RTE and O'Brien Media are also failing to report on this matter also. Not a surprise. Today being Sunday, it only remains to be seen what else might finally Sunday newspaper emerge from a disastrous week for Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. There are backers. They are possibly on their separate knees praying for a good start to the week. Next week. If they are, it's highly likely that IRTE and Dennis O'Brien Media won't be reporting that also. This concludes the report that went up on the United People website. The article The Week from Hell for Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael can be found on the United People website under its blog section. This is Jeff Rudd of United People. Thank you for listening. Please tune in again.